Welcome to the Bob Allen's HealthCast, episode number 297, Iodine and the Prevention of Breast and Prostate Cancers. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Maupin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about hormone replacement therapy for women, which is available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Four of the scariest words you can ever hear are breast cancer and prostate cancer. We're going to talk about breast cancer and prostate cancer in the context of uh, iodine and iodine need and consumption and use within the human body. Because we now know as a result of of work that was done by David Brownstein in his book, Iodine, and the chapters in it on breast cancer and prostate Mm -hmm. cancer, we know that uh, if you don't get enough iodine in your system, what happens is that you, the, the, the places where the iodine goes to do its work get saturated or filled or blocked by chemicals like fluorine, chlorine, and bromine. Uh, that means that your body can't get the iodine that it needs. And as a result, the imbalances in your system that trigger the growth of cancers start to run wild. Mm-hmm. And so to prevent that, that happening from those triggers being pulled and the cancer-causing agents or the, or the cancer cells to grow, you need to have the iodine. And so that, that we want to explain that today mm-hmm. and discuss it in terms of what we learned from Dr. Brownstein at a recent medical conference that we attended and from reading his book. So it, it's, it's like we have, we don't have enough of what we need. Mm-hmm. And when, to- and even if we did, toxins come in, they kick off the iodine. Right. Okay. They take its place in the cell. So the, the iodine goes to every cell in the body. Yes. Iodine goes you to every, enough. you need it. It's and, and essential. Well, the, what's the RDA? The, the RDA is way low. It's 0.125 milligrams. So less than one milligram is what the government says you need every day. Okay. And that was developed a long time ago based on what would keep you from having a goiter. But I'm not even sure that would keep you from having a thyroid growth here. In in our studies, it doesn't keep, it's not enough. So what you really need right. is men need about 12.5 milligrams a day and women need about 25 milligrams a day. So, so men need 12 times the RDA <laughs> and, and women no, need 25 times. 120 the, times, gee. 125 times the RDA because it's 0.1, not one. Okay. So, I mean, maybe that's even worse. Anyway, <laughs> math. Um, so it is, it, I mean, it's an extraordinary discrepancy. Yes. And it's old numbers and, and I'm not, you know, no one's changed it in many years. And it's, it's true that at first when the government looked at this, they went, oh, goiters are everywhere. We need to put, uh, we need to put iodine in salt and bread and other things people all eat in the United States. So they then made a rule that you had to put iodine in everything. And then for some reason, and no one knows that reason, they took the iodine out of bread and pastas and other staples Mm -hmm. and they put bromine in. Well, bromine is a toxin and bromine goes into the cell and takes over the spot iodine should take. And it essentially turns on the cell living forever, which is a cancer. It's a, it's a cancer, um, quality of a cell. It just keeps living forever. It turns off. It's, it's, it's called apostosis. It's death. Um, it's death message. So every cell should have a life and a death. And then a new cell comes up and then you have a life and a death. But when it's kind of like you grow new skin, every right. so many Yeah. Years. You know, the skin just comes to the surface, peels off, you right. know, that's, that's what cells are supposed to Check do. Check your sheets. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so what happens is you should have that turn off switch. Well, bromine, fluorine, chlorine in our cells where iodine should be, turns that switch off and then cells start living Which forever. Is what happens with cancer? They yes. just replicate, 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 and they don't die. They don't die. don't die. So that's, that's the basic, um, 
definition of what cancer cells do. So that's the problem. Toxins taking the place of where iodine should be. Mm -hmm. And the best way to treat that is to replace the iodine and then release the toxins and then don't expose yourself again. Well, in the chapter in his book that discusses this, he cites several examples of women who were not getting any better with chemotherapy. On bre with breast cancer. And quit taking chemotherapy and started taking iodine therapy. High doses of iodine. And got better. And that their cancers actually disappeared. That yep. they could see it over several months of, of observing that the cancer cells just degenerated and broke apart and died. That's true. And that's in his book. I yes. haven't seen that personally, and I have not... I don't treat cancer. And you're tre right. You don't treat that. My job is prevention. Mm -hmm. So in my world, everybody with a breast is going to need 25 milligrams of iodine. Because it prevents those other toxins from coming in and, and covering the cell so that the iodine can't get in. Right. and the, or, or just replacing the iodine. The iodine has to kick off all of these toxins. They have to go into your system, God forbid, and you have to pee them off or something. Well, when it happens, something. you may get what's called an allergy to, to iodine, but it's really a rash and sometimes a fever that is the result of all those toxins being kicked out of the cell system, put back in the bloodstream that then goes to urine or, or feces or whatever to get rid of it. And you have to drink a lot of water to get rid of that. But that discomfort is your body cleansing itself of the toxins. And here's another thing in case that has ever happened to you that, I mean, cause we don't want you to stop taking iodine because you've got, you've gotten a rash. Right. The answer to that is taking Take, going off your iodine for two weeks and then building up your body to, to be able to handle the toxins that are released. Take vitamin C, 500 milligrams a day, and then continue that after you start back on iodine. Take selenium. What Can't remember the selenium. Selen selenium is a trace mineral. Okay. And those two things are going to help you not have the reaction to the iodine when you restart it. So we tell people who either when they're on Selenium, iodine, 100 to 400 milligrams a day. Thank you. I always have to look that up. So, so that's a trace mineral. You can find it anywhere. And if you take both vitamin C, 500 milligrams a day with that 400 or, or 100 to 400 selenium, build your body back up. So it won't have that reaction. It'll be able to handle all of the toxins that are uh, dispelled from where the iodine takes its place. So it's kind of like, um, it's kind of like musical chairs. Everybody's circling and iodine's trying to take the place of somebody else right. and, and trying to get rid of the toxins. And it does, right. but you have to be but aware. But the toxins to go somewhere. Right. And so it can go to your skin. It can go, it, instead of, if there's a lot of toxin, you're more likely to have more of a reaction than if there isn't. So the, the goal then is to start back on the iodine mm -hmm. and iodorol is what we use. And start back on the iodorol after two weeks, and you shouldn't get the rash. Well, and we are, as Kathy says, she doesn't treat breast cancer directly. She works to prevent it. If you have breast cancer and, or, or you have any kind of cancer and you're working with a cancer specialist, what we would encourage you to do is just ask them about iodine. Uh, get Dr. Brownstein's book, Iodine, Why You Need It, and ask if they're familiar with it. It is not the standard of care for the treatment of these cancers. And I don't recommend you go off chemo ever without your doctor's oh, recommendation. Absolutely. absolutely. And that's I mean, that is not, clarify. that's not my message. He gives examples of that happening in his book, but he also talks about where these people came from and what they've been through. And, and there's a lot more. So we're, we're not saying, oh, just go get this because this, uh, what you need for iodine is iodorol, uh, mm -hmm. iodorol, say that correctly. Uh, and you can get that over the counter, but you shouldn't, do anything without discussing it with your doctor. When you start to change your medicines or your treatments on your own, that's a very dangerous thing. You know, a little yeah. learning is a dangerous thing. That's true. Yeah. And you have to bring and, them and the information you've got. Finish the quotation. Yeah. <laughs> so, so what we're discussing is, or what I'd like to be discussing is preventing breast cancer for people who are at high risk for people who, um, or prostate cancer, both, both, both glands absorb iodine a lot. And if you absorb iodine, you absorb these other toxins. So and the larger your breasts, the, the more, more fiber, iodine you need. The more iodine you need because if you don't have it, you get fibrous cysts. Mm -hmm. And 
I don't know that there's a corollary or if that's a parallel. There's never been a corollary cancer. that I found mm -hmm. between fibrous cysts and breast cancer. Okay, that, that was my question. Although fibrous cysts can hurt and swell, mm -hmm. and they they actually cause people a lot of trouble because they can't see their mammogram very well mm -hmm. with all the fibers. It looks dense. So well, sometimes early cancer diagnosis gets missed because right. it's masked by. So the, that's really what happens. It's not that that causes it yet. There's got to be something, and I don't know what that is, and I'll right. admit that, right. between the low iodine turning off the, the apostosis um, of the activity of the cell and, and breast cancer because that's he's drawn a line between those two. Right. And if one causes um, fibrous cysts, low iodine causes that, it can... Then and it causes breast cancer. I don't know if there's any corollary or if they are parallel, but in my world they're parallel. Mm -hmm. So I haven't found a cause from one to the other. But if you have fibrocystic breasts at any age, it's very possible, probable that you don't have enough iodine or that you've absorbed a lot of toxins and they've taken iodine's place. So you have to then take iodine to get rid of that, and then you can get your breasts to calm down and not hurt and swell every month with, with your cycle. So that's, it's, it's important. So iodine by itself can do that. Yes, it can do that. And iodine by itself can help with prostate enlargement. Most men have prostate enlargement mm -hmm. after the age of 55. So if you have prostate enlargement, it's very possible that if you replace your iodine, then your prostate enlargement can calm down. Will that also cause your PSA numbers not to go up? When they're looking at uh, risks for prostate cancer. They look at how big your prostate is plus your PSA numbers. Okay. So they look at both of those things before they decide to biopsy you. Mm -hmm. if somebody has an elevation in a PSA, but has a small prostate and it's regular and smooth. They don't always biopsy because the PSA could be from someplace else. But if your PSA numbers spike, then you should have checked. Yeah. You should have a prostate exam and talk to your urologist or your family doctor about it and decide what you're going to do next. But sometimes the next thing is repeat the prostate, the PSA, after you've not had sex for three days, you haven't ridden a bike for three days, you haven't had a workout for three days, just wait three days, get your PSA redone. And generally, if you have a small, regular prostate, It'll be low. Because all of those activities can cause a temporary swelling. In a the false process. and a false and, false and positive false for PSA. Positive. And then that scares everybody. Because, you know, the, the rubric is that men who don't die of something else, if they live long enough, will die of prostate cancer. I just don't believe that's true. If I don't we, know if that it we is or not, but that's what everybody said well, because, throughout my lifetime. Yeah. That's I know that heard. that's what everybody said, but yeah. I think there's ways of preventing that. I just don't think that the, you have to die of prostate cancer. Well, and one of the ways may be from if, if what Dr. Brownstein is saying is true and, and the research continues to, to be done and to validate his, his claims is that if you have the right amount of iodine, you're going to have less of an issue with your prostate and run mm -hmm. less risk than a prostate cancer. That's right. I mean, he has lots of research that he has, he has that back up what he says and research that he's done. And a lot of done in, in Europe. Yes. A lot of them are done. A lot of them are done. Europe is, they don't have the bromine in their breads. They don't have, I mean, I, you know, you have to wonder why when you go to Europe, you feel so good when you eat the same foods as compared to here. And it's a lot of it is no additives, fresh food. They, in the wine, they don't put sulfites in it to then transport it to the United States. I guess that's a requirement for the U S I mean, sulfites are what give you the kind of a headache and, and make you, um, get migraines after. Well, they don't have the DEA in here <laughs> <Thank> <laughs> and the FDA and the FDA, yeah. the FDA is the one with the rules, but mm -hmm. I think they have something like the DEA <laughs> in any case, I'm not sure what it's called, yeah. but in any case you feel much healthier. But one of the things that I, I love to go to the ocean, mm -hmm. there's a lot of things at the ocean that make people feel better. And most people feel better, not just because they're not working. And some people crave living by the ocean for different reasons, but besides the sun and vitamin D does make you feel better right. when you get vitamin D from the sun. But the other reason, which I never really thought about is the surf. When you're on the beach, mm -hmm. the surf is then crashing on the, on the beach and it's releasing iodine into the air and you're breathing it in. It goes in through your skin and the iodine is then stimulating 
your metabolism, your thyroid, and, and it's making your you know, it's brain happier. You say it. Uh, you've recently started recommending to, um, or I've recently heard it. I don't mm -hmm. know. You may have been doing it longer. Uh, that almost everybody in America needs to take something called iodorol, which is an iodine supplement mm -hmm. to increase the amount of iodine in your system. Before you put people on it, I, I mean, before you put m myself and my wife on mm -hmm. it uh, as a supplement that we take, my wife used to say that episodically she would crave seaweed salad. And so we'd have to go to some oriental restaurant <laughs> where they fly in fresh seaweed mm -hmm. and she could get this seaweed salad because her system was craving it. She has a smart system. Apparently. She was craving iodine. Yeah. And that's where, that's um, in the ocean, seaweed is what actually concentrates the iodine. Okay. And iodine is concentrated in that green, slimy, whatever, kelp. Yeah. And then that is seaweed slash kelp, different types of, of green that grows in the ocean. But they both uh, concentrate iodine. And you can eat both of them. Yeah. And they are... Um, well, if you ever eat sushi, they wrap it in, in a green kelp stuff. It's yeah. called nori. Nori. And, nori is, yeah, made out of seaweed. And, but it's processed. I mean, they make it into sheets and cut it and wrap right. it. Right. It's dried, really. But, it's but not the, really processed too much. It's just dried. Okay. And so... And pressed. And pressed. And that makes it able to wrap around the sushi. But my nurse practitioner, Sandy, and I eat that stuff. Just buy that. We, the only problem with that is you get it in your teeth and you can't, like, go talk to patients yeah, And you can actually stuff. buy that at stores. Packaged yeah, store. you can. Yeah. You can. And, and it's best if you put some... Um, olive oil, some sea salt, and some some other like she puts kind of I I don't know some kind of um, other herb well, and, on and it you, and it tastes good. We use it as a snack. There's another trigger. You then you have to brush use your teeth. Sea salt. Sea salt. You know our whole medical complex and and standard of care knowledge for the last fifty years has been don't eat salt you know, because salt will cause hypertension and cholesterol problems and heart attacks and so on. Uh, you're saying that whole messaging is wrong because the salt that we eat is all bleached out table salt mm -hmm. and all the nutrient ingredients and iodine ingredients in that are gone. And mm -hmm. so it's just a flavor and a preservative. Uh, mm -hmm. You recommend sea salt. Right. Which has the iodine in it that you need. It has and a little you, iodine, but not enough. And, and you have you to still take a more. A tablespoon a day. No, a teaspoon. A teaspoon, a day. Right. teaspoon Tees a day. Oh, you're just teaspoon. wishful thinking. Yeah, well, yeah. Okay, so so I grew up in a household without salt. Basically, so, we never had salt on anything. The food tasted terrible. The only thing we had salt in was ham. You know, ham always has cured. you know cured ham has because salt it's a on it. It's a preserve. We used to you know back in the in the. Um, Covered Before wagon days. Food, that's how everything. that we salted yeah. everything to keep it, so that you could have food in the when you weren't harvesting salt pork. Yeah. So so this is something we didn't have any of that in our house, and both of my parents developed high blood pressure. I mean, yeah. In fact, it may work opposite. It's it's once again not not salt is not salt is not salt is not salt. Right. Okay. Right. So sea salt has a different. Non, uh, it ha it has a more, I guess, dynamic capability of keeping us healthy. We need salt. We go outside and sweat. We work out. We sweat. That salt coming out of us. We need to replace that. And if we don't, then we feel our blood pressure goes down. We feel exhausted. So all this no salt stuff. It's just that we're. It's no table salt. We need sea salt. Right. right. So that's what we need to take in. It's a, it, they are not the same thing. So it's in like in so many ways, testosterone is not testosterone, not testosterone, estrogen. There's all different kinds and there's some kinds that are much better than others. So that's my recommendation is sea salt. But if you, I want I want to talk a little bit, not just about like aging, but I want to talk about just for a few minutes about young women there are young women who get thyroid disease. Mm -hmm. There's a few peaks in the time when women get thyroid disease. The reason we get it more often than men is because, once again, we have breasts who that soak up all the iodine and steal it from our thyroid. So we get it when we're when we're very young, when we're pubescent, and our breasts are developing, and then it steals it from the thyroid, and our thyroids tend to not 
not work very well or die and and never come back. So you get Hashimoto's or great. Well, you just you just get hypothyroidism from just lack of iodine, but you could also get one of those other diseases too, mm-hmm. especially if you have it in your family that shows a weakness. So so it can happen then, it can happen right after childbirth when your baby is taking all your iodine from breast milk. It concentrates iodine from your body to the baby. So it's stealing the iodine and we get we usually get Hashimoto's after childbirth. Okay. So that's another time. Then the other bump in low thyroid or hypothyroidism is when we hit menopause. And usually before we go through menopause, we get estrogen dominant. Our breasts swell, need more iodine. Our thyroid's iodine is stolen. And then our breasts basically soak it all up. Not it may still not be enough, but then our thyroid dies or has Hash- Hashimoto's or Graves disease. So, so those are the three bumps. It all has to do with breasts, <laughs> and that's why more women than men have thyroid disease. Is that all of our iodine is going to something that doesn't develop and sponge up all of our iodine? If we had enough iodine at those stages, I Brownstein and I both agree on this that we wouldn't have as much hypothyroidism. Um, in the United States. And we, it's rampant. It's everywhere. My son, son-in-law was talking to me about, he was checking people in and out of my office. He works as a medical assistant. He goes, why do so many people have thyroid problems right. in your population? And I'm like, well, partly because I'm catching people who have other hormonal deficiencies right. and they also have thyroid deficiency. They probably have a lot of the, um, of, of the, uh, toxins. So that's displacing their iodine. It's causing lots of trouble and causing trouble with ovaries as well. Yeah. I mean, we have, we see lots of ovarian abnormalities, not just menopause, but cysts and masses, people who have had endometriosis, Mm -hmm. their ovaries aren't functioning normally. And part of that has to do with the fact that the ovary needs iodine as well. It soaks it up too. In summary, it's important to hear us say that we are, not telling you that taking iodine will prevent breast cancer or prostate cancer. 100% it won't. We are telling you that there is research that is growing that's saying it does have a positive impact on the prevention. And in some cases, people that already have breast cancer or prostate cancer have experienced cures from having iodine treatments. But we don't know cause and effect correlation. The research is still wide open on that. But it is a consideration that you should discuss with your doctor. Don't self-diagnose, don't self-medicate, don't change your treatment protocols. Talk to your doctor about it, read the book, check the information and see what they have to say. But so as far as staying on your treatments, but irrespective of that and not just breast cancer or prostate cancer, generally you will be healthier and things will work better for you if you get enough iodine in your system. That's right. Thank you. Thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.